سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بما دادكم ونزلكم سيدي رسول الكريم حبيب نازي ما دادي يا سيدي يا سلطان نوري من شيخ عبد الله فايز داغستاني سيدنا محمد نازم عادل حكاني مولانا شيخ شام كباني شيخ عدنان كباني شيخ محمد عادل مولانا خالق الخوش دواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا بكى صديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان امام الحسن عليه السلام امام الحسين عليه السلام سيداتنا فاطمه عليه السلام وسائر وساداتنا صدقين الفاتحه امين يا رب العالمين Inshallah Allah dress us from the lights of Sayyidina Usman Al-Qani inshaAllah and the realities of uloom and knowledges and Divinely knowledges and the realities of Holy Qur'an and that the tashkil and the encoding and encrypting of Holy Qur'an that Sayyidina Uthman Al-Qani Jamil Qur'an al-Majeed was responsible for the immense, immense codings and secrets and realities. <coughs> so it's not something small, it's something immense that Allah destined for that Holy Soul and that by a tawassul, by a means we can reach to that. That's why every secret and every reality has a secret and every secret has its reality. By the fact of knowing a reality then we have even deeper access to it. It requires belief, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, amanu means all you who believe Allah then challenging then believe even more. So belief never ends. Somebody says, well I don't, I don't uh, think so, okay don't, who cares, doesn't take anything from anyone but what? if this is truly an amazing reality and by merely keeping a pen because you show that you're a scholar. You're a scholar in Islam, a da'i that you want to be a recipient of knowledges, right? It's a tool that when you don't have a pen you're telling Allah, don't send me any knowledge because I'm neither prepared for it nor I want it. Very bad adab. Then Allah said, Pass this person by. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They're not interested, they're not worthy of it. When you carry it, you're hazer, you're, you're ready, you're always on, on a vigil that, Ya Rabbi I'm a seeker of knowledges, the Muhammadan knowledges and we describe many talks on the qalam. Now go back and Google qalam on our website Muhammadan way and say, oh my goodness these are all the realities of Hazrat Usman All the power of the qalam in which Allah first commands to Prophet Alam bil qalam means the eternal soul of Sayyidina Usman is there means Alam bil qalam that all knowledge is going to come to you by means of qalam mahyalam Knowledges that you don't know not, not knowledge you get in accounting and math and that you can find in a book but the knowledges in which you'll never know Allah saying by qalam, not typing, not recording but by qalam. So when they hold the qalam 
they have a presence of Sayyidina Uthman al Qani Jami al Qur'an in Majeed. Now you're understanding that reality. And as a result of that qalam, Allah is going to begin the fountain that flows within the heart of the servant because they become recipients, they're writing, writing. You know, the companions, what was their character? If Prophet even something came from his holy mouth, they grabbed it. Why? Because there was the ishq and love that nothing from Prophet hit the floor. That was ishq and Nabi Never for him to be humiliated, never for anything from Prophet to fall. Why? Because there was immense love. So imagine that type of love with that being a recipient of that reality, how they, they put into our hearts. If you have that love and you hear Muhammadan haqqaiqs, right, how are you letting it hit the floor and nothing happening? You think it comes again with the next bus that you catch? No, it's the adab. You're showing Allah just like the companions were showing or they, they would say with Prophet oh we'll catch it next time. No, they didn't let anything from Sayyidina Muhammad to be lost. And by means of that character Allah then describes these are the companions Sahabi are stationed that can never be achieved. Why? Because of the companionship, the love and the adab that they had. Well we can be companions, the Prophet described in the last days, they'd be my ashiqeen, they love me. They'd do anything just for one nazar from me, one glimpse of me, one dream of me. And how? By the power of the qalam, their life is writing, their life is waiting for a haqqaiq and a reality because they want their entire being to document their existence was the documenting of the Muhammadan haqqaiq upon this earth. What I want in my kitab? The angels are writing. You want to die with your kitab saying what? You had breakfast, you had lunch, you had dinner, you washed, you did this. That's 99% of all people their kitab will only be that. That's not what makes somebody's kitab to be noble. But as soon as you write, we described before, what happens? It's like a photocopy, as soon as you go like this by an action, the angel has to mimic what you wrote. Not document your actions anymore. As you write, they have to write what you wrote. So you're writing now haqqaiqs on your kitab. That's why we said, Aghatul Nihmati Ishqi, by your hand you changed my destiny. How? Because you sat here tonight, you heard this reality, your destiny completely changed, completely changed. You can't take it back, you could never have uh, achieved that. Why? Because you just heard a haqqaiq. This haqqaiq that you heard, your soul will go to Allah and say, I heard this reality, Ya Rabbi let me too swim in this reality. Forever it's changed. Somebody watching now at home turned from many different horrible videos, clicked on that YouTube, sat there and started to listen, their destiny completely changed. That's how they change just by their talk. Because the talk of awliya, the talk of those whom inherited from awliyaullah is a qalam. Because modern qalam is just their speech, it's a means in which to convey knowledges. Those knowledges change destinies because you're hearing Muhammadan haqqaiqs. Your soul now is moving in a completely different reality for all of eternity. So it means the immensity of the power of the pen and what it truly represents of knowledges and eternal knowledges. And that Allah gave us that companionship that if your heart has Sayyidina Muhammad you have in your hand your asa, you have on your finger your ring, you have within your heart and your pocket a qalam to represent these knowledges, Allah is dressing you now with the presence of the holy companions.
to support the one whom loves Sayyidina Muhammad and that they accompany these ashiqeen, inshaAllah. Immense <coughs> blessings. You can't thank Allah enough for these blessings. So all our life is, is nothing that we could possibly thank Allah for all of what He's giving to us of these realities. So people are so concerned with all their problems and all the things they wanted but they truly never thanked Allah for what He gave them of this ni'mat and this blessing, inshaAllah. What do we have for tonight? <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah SubhanAllah, thank you so much for sharing from the secrets of the Sahabi. Amen. Can you please explain a little bit about what some of these tashkil mean? Like the Zabr, the Zair, etc. Nope. <laughs> I think we, ha we have talked about that. We said last night. You see wow and you say, ooh. <laughs> so if you take Qur'an class they say, ooh, everything you have to pronounce, ooh. And say, that's, you think that's the only reason that was there? Just so you say, ooh. <laughs> no. But Allah and when you take these classes of marifa, the wow represents what? All the Qur'an is based on this wow, right? Based on love. Allah brought all creation based on this wow. All the unfolding of Qur'an is based on wow. So it's immense. If we understood the immensity of love that Allah is wanting to be known, He brought what He loved most. Khulqul Azim, the magnificent character and creation known as Muhammadun Rasulullah Remember Allah's timing, not our timing. We are, we are not cause and effect, you know, you do like this, you go late, your train is missed. Allah is beyond that understanding. Allah created all of these realities to be known by it. So He put the best of what He has, the best of what He wanted and called it Muhammadun Rasulullah and to see who out there would be clever to figure that out. Because if they found Him they found a reality towards Allah's understanding, right? People go to the ocean and say, SubhanAllah, why? Because the magnificence of the ocean, its power, its beauty, it reminds you of the beauty of Allah but what's the greatest beauty of Allah His Prophet When they found truly that amazing reality, then they found the greatness of Allah What Allah has put into the Rasul Kareem and this reality of the soul and all this beauty, everything that He created of beauty was to exemplify that reality. So this is uh, immense, immense. When we say, wow, Allah's entire oceans of wudud is dressing that letter. Now think of that letter in reference to the whole word that it's been put. That's the importance. So when you connect your heart, you meditate, these are just for us to understand that this Qur'an was encrypted. So don't think that Sayyidina Uthman's job was so simple. It was a huge and immense task that the encrypting how many thousands of letters in Holy Qur'an? 6,666 verses but I think it was like 660,000 letters, it's an amazing number. Given now the responsibility, encrypted. And immediately he put the, the tashkils which were all codings. We use it as a means in which to recite and make certain sounds that are correct but in reality was encoded. So the two lines up meant there's a tajalli coming upon that huruf. Two lines down that the, the huruf is giving a tajalli to the one whom is reading it. The wow, we said the one that looked like the crown because it's supposed to be the elongation of the letters like a m, like a double m. 
No, it actually represents a crown that this is from the sultanat. So that letter is a secret from the sultanat dressing that letter that dresses that word. Now to, to know every one of them, not important right now but to what is being emphasized is imagine the one whom did this encryption. That's the only reason they're teaching. That's so you can go through and like, so I want the tajalli of this. You didn't even master connecting with your shaykh before you try to unlock the secrets of Qur'an. First lock the secrets with your connection with the shaykh. But what they're teaching is that this encryption that was immense, immense that was given to Sayyidina Uthman Jamil Qur'an, that he was created for this purpose. And Allah created the reality for this reality. And that Allah from ancient revealing the Qur'an, Alam bil qalam. That was an ancient destiny given to Sayyidina Uthman Alam bil qalam. That in your nation, the conveyance of knowledge to your nation because the greatest nation is the Muhammadan nation. The conveyance of the uloom of all these awliya was what? Their companionship with Sayyidina Uthman, Al-Qani, his generosity. They know it, they didn't know. You think all of them knew that reality? No. But Allah destined it, Alam bin Qalam, that they're going to know knowledges they never know but the reality of the Qalam and Prophet knows who's this Qalam. That from my companion this holy soul will accompany all these shaykhs, all these awliya, all these students and by means of his companionship he will begin to send a madad and support and conveyance of knowledges. It's immense, immense. Imagine then all the shaykhs, all the scholars, all the students who carry asa. And how Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is with them. That's why Allah describes, your nation's not alone. You're never, were you ever a thing forgotten? Allah says in Qur'an, no. How could you be forgotten? If you didn't forget them, there's no way they forgot you. But when you forget the sunnah, that, that's shaitan playing with us. Why? Don't forget your cane, don't forget Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Don't forget your ring and forget Imam Ali Salam. Don't forget your qalam in your pocket and forget Sayyidina Uthman. So it means these are Allah's gifts to us. When we carry them, we carry this immense power and in their heart is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad <clears throat> uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Alhamdulillah, can you please advise on the correct way to go about with very old Qur'ans, loose pages, unused Arabic literature? <laughs> Just put it away, don't, don't let it get destroyed. Because if you open and the pages start to get destroyed, if it's something ancient and, and collectible then you know put it away and, and don't let it to be destroyed and fall to pieces. So just take care of, it has its own reality. The ancient, the more old of the Qur'ans, the more of uh, angelic reality. Those were made by the hands of uh, pious people with, uh, with a lot of ishq and love and they wrote by their qalam. So it has many secrets for those whom collect Qur'ans and, and carry the older Qur'ans. The new ones that are printed by machines then they have a, a different reality. But the, before they were making them all by hand, that the shaykhs would write them by hand, immense, immense blessings in them. So alhamdulillah safeguard and keep as a trust inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can anyone believe in the Qur'an and not respect Sayyidina Uthman? Yeah I don't know, how can they? So that, that Allah granted us that love, so alhamdulillah we are so fortunate. Now take your love even higher in understanding that they represent many things around us all the time. 
means they didn't come and go, they're not figures in histories and in movies and stories, they are continuously around us. When Allah that have a taqwa of me and keep the company of truthful servants. And in every salah we say, As salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. Uh, who are we facing when we're praying? That should be a hint for some people that don't like to hear these things, right? We must be facing Prophet and all salihin looking at us, not looking that way because you don't give salams to people's back of their heads, right? Adab is what? I say salams to you face to face. If you turn your face to me, I'm not required to say salams to you. So we say, As salamu alaykum, yuha nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. Our salah is teaching us we're facing somebody, we're facing many people. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Just you think. So, it means the words are there, people don't seem to understand the words they're saying. So that's important that we are never something alone. As we're praying their faces are always looking at us and that they keep the companionship of pious people. Allah has us saying it in our salah, so means they're always around us. Then you become conscious of them being with us. Worshipness is only for Allah but He didn't keep us alone. Because nobody's alone, everybody believes shaitan is around them. But you think Allah only let shaitan have this power? No. Rahman and the kingdom of Rahman, their servants are everywhere. As soon as you make salah, why is this salah powerful we said before? Why is prayer so powerful? Because you activate the presence of very powerful people. As soon as you start calling the azan, those faces begin to look at you. As soon as you make salah you're under their nazar. That nazar scares away all shayateen. So it means there's a, a very powerful reality in salah. Now if you bring it into your marifat, into your heart and into your reality that becomes more and more powerful, more and more powerful within the soul and the vision of the soul and the vision of the heart. So it means it's, it's, it's an endless ocean of realities inshaAllah. Pray as if you see, those whom see when they pray they give their salams to Prophet What did the holy companions say when they swore to something? I swear by the one who holds my soul in his hand. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is famous for that. When he would swear to something that verily this is true, I swear by the one whom holds my soul in his hand. He prays and he sees who's holding his soul, inshaAllah. <coughs> yeah, that's a big subhanAllah. That maybe you're gonna go more. No, no, no more, no more. That, <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Subhanallah, finish. Next. <laughs> uh, as salamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, why is hair so important? There is guidance to cover it, not to cover it. What is the divinely reality of the hair on our heads? <laughs> hair on the heads, yeah. Well, we talked last night, look at the words Allah use, right? So, hijab. Hijab is a protection, Allah used the word protection, why? To protect. So we use hijab to protect us, we have taweez like a hijab that protects us. Our clothing is a protection for us. The energy of hair for a man is different than the energy of the hair for a woman. The energy of the hair of the man makes him to become wild. So he trims the hair or shaves the hair so that not to imitate the animal kingdom. 
the animal kingdom, the male puts the hair is the reverse in the animal kingdom, right? The lion has a big mane of hair and the female has no hair. But for heavens it's the reverse, don't imitate the animal kingdom, imitate the heavenly kingdom. So when the male has to discipline his appearance and trim his hair, grow his beard so that he has a hayba, right? So watch the social media, now they shave their beard and grow their hair to imitate the animal kingdom, not heavenly kingdom. And why shaitan wants people to do that so that when these shaitans reveal themselves they'll be in a power, in a position of power over insan because insan will have been deflated, emasculated and have no power, right? So the biggest fear for shaitans are rijal in which you look at them they're very fearsome. They have beards, their hair is short, they follow Islam, they follow the way, they have a light in their eyes. When those shaitans reveal themselves to rijal, the rijal will kill them. But if the rijal look like a feminine with nothing <laughs> the shaitan will kill him and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to prepare people to be emasculated and no more energy in them. The, their whole system on all these things, why they're trying to change the, the orientation of people is take away their energy. So that when they reveal themselves people have no energy at all, no protection, no, no haiba. And their biggest threat is Islam because Islam has immense oceans of haiba. Because anything in the Muhammadan way and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad has a haiba, a majestic dress. And it's not by fearsome in their heart or mean in their heart, it's just a heavenly dress upon the person. So the beard carries an immense dress. Prophet described that there are angels within the beard just jumping around because there's an immense dress of energy upon the beard. So it means that everything that Prophet brought for us must have an immense secret towards energy. Everything that was advised for us must have an immense sense of energy but requires faith. So last days people will say, oh things are so dangerous, I will take my hijab off so that people don't notice me. But if you translate in words what you just said is that I will take my protection off so that I can be safe. What? You took your protection off to be safe? You now entered and left the umbrella of protection. What comes upon you at that time that's, that's your problem. But Allah gave to us a system in which to be protected. When things are good no problem you can get away with a lot of things. But when things are very bad then this system that Allah gave to us is immensely powerful. So now they have images of people screaming on airplanes. Ah, screaming, oh I see something, I see something. This is what we've talked for 20 years now. A day will come where people will see what they've invited into their lives. The marks they have on their body, they'll come alive, they'll start to move all over them. That's not a coincidence what they put on themselves is just, oh this is a beautiful picture. I said, but that picture is going to come to life and scare the hell out of you. So it means that people will see what they brought into their life and they got to live with it. When these shaitans and demons and jinn start showing themselves to people, people are screaming on airplanes now. What do you think is coming? When a five-year-old child, Prophet described that a five-year-old child will turn grey from the fear of what's coming. The hair of the child will go grey. Many things won't make their hair grey, they watch very scary videos all the time. So what's coming that can do that? So it means that whatever Allah gave to the nation was an immense protection. That's why they're describing, keep your taweez, keep your ring, keep your cane, keep your beard, keep your sunnah, keep all of these things. These are the, the armour for the believer and the, 
the power from the Muhammadan kingdom, these are all immense, immense realities and blessings for the nation inshaAllah. And everybody is going to start getting tested by it, you're going to see things in your homes and everywhere. And now see you know if your ability to fight it, protect yourself against it, are you doing your zikr, your salawats, your dalal akhirat so that to repel and push that energy away. Doesn't matter you live in a place and you think your, your place is safe but the people next door are very bad and if they're bad their shaitans are trying to come through the wall, right? But then we said before that you'll know if your practices are strong or not. So it requires continuous practice, continuous zikr, continuous muraqabah so that to have this powerful and strong energy inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi yesterday you spoke about the reality of tattoos and the demonic energy if we have the option to remove them should we especially if we struggle a lot with negative energy and temptation yeah we said we have a talk on that again everyone to their own because we don't you know want to push people bef be beyond their ability but if you think that taking it off it has a burning because most people when you talk to them take it off say, oh that burns. I say, what do you think then the burning of the grave will be? If burning it on this dunya is painful then do you want Allah to take it off in the grave? Take it off now. You put some anesthesia because there won't be anesthesia in the grave, <laughs> it's just going to be take off time, right? But now you go put some anesthesia, put some medicine, put something on it and take that thing off. So that you don't have that difficulty for the grave, that's for the grave. But if what they're teaching, these are doorways to the shayateen. That if that shaitan is, is locked upon that person's arm and body, that's going to start moving. What do you do at that time when something is, is, is locked to you? You can't even dig it to get it off. There's a reason why they've been yoked and marked by people. These are not fashion statements, shaitans don't, don't waste time, they don't do things for fashion, for fun. They wanted to mark people and go into them like we're selling a taweez for people, we're telling people, put your taweez on. Why? To be protected. But shaitans do the reverse. Their version of a taweez is, put your tattoo on so we can lock on to you, right? That's what we describe, why they do these things, why they harm people. When they abuse people what happens? You darken their heart. When they darken the heart of somebody they can attach much more stronger. That's why these organizations they do bad things to people, they do bad things to children, why? To darken their heart so that the light of their heart is no longer shining to reflect energies out. When they darken them and harm them and hurt things what happens? The heart becomes very darkened from these, uh, these events. As a result the shaitans can attach like a clam onto a rock, it just won't let go and that's all they want. So all these practices are about energy, about protection, about building uh, this energy and the, the light within the heart and safeguarding it. We have taweez upon ourselves, we put taweez upon the house, taweez upon the car. And uh, our zikrs, our practices, our salah, and then as soon as you make your muraqabah, you have to build the energy. The men have to build their energy. Their energy has to be strong, like an umbrella for their home to protect against these things that are coming. So, these are Im important, inshaAllah. <coughs> as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. The asa, the ring, and the pen. Uh, can the women also keep these things to follow the sunnah? Yes yeah, sure of course, why not? They're allowed to have rings, they have rings all the time but they keep it for fashion. Take one ring and say, no this is for the love of Prophet Sunnah the Nabi asking for the madad of Imam Ali and they wear it with the intention of the sunnah. And they have uh, feminine and female, female canes that are narrow and thinner and they keep their asa with them and uh, they wear the sunnah. So definitely they keep their hijab that's the sunnah, they keep their siwak in their purse and when they want to pray they use the siwak, they keep their qalam in their purse and when knowledges come and when they sit for knowledges they take their book out and they have their qalam with them. 
Everyone has a pen in their purse and in their wallet and in their, their being, inshaAllah. So it's always with us. Now acknowledge it as the sunnah of Prophet So it's already there. Just acknowledge it that, that Ya Rabbi I'm keeping the way of Prophet inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah In these last days um, <coughs> how can we protect ourselves spiritually and physically? I think we've already gone yeah. over all of those things and the meditation and uh, all the practices. Get the meditation book on how to make your muraqabah, the, what's this, the power of angelic, how is it, what's the title? In the pursuit of angelic. This is all about qudra and energy and all the practices on the website, it's on the app, all the articles. So everything that's being taught is about how to make your tafakkur, your contemplation, how to build your energy and then to keep that energy and keep the presence of awliyaullah inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bas siri Surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.